All right, sports fans, welcome back. I'm hoping this is going to be a quick project. Just going to record a short video, <laughs> he says, don't believe it, about what I'm going to do here. In the front, I just received a Robbins Rails older kit, a Greenville 60-foot boxcar decorated for nickel plate. I didn't know they made these. I've got several of these undecorated. Because my plan was to do a Wabash car, a New York Central car, and I forget who else had them. But a fair number of railroads that I like did happen to have these cars. So, once I saw this nickel plate car, I had to pick one up. Now, it is a kit. And just as a comparison, the same car in the back there, that's one of the new Tangent cars. Guys, I, they are absolutely gorgeous. They re really, really are. But, this is what, $49, 50 some bucks. This I got off of eBay for about, I don't know, let me call it 15 bucks. I mean, let me call it 20 deliver, you know, okay, whatever. A fair amount cheaper. And you know what? Yeah, you can tell, I mean, the doors are, are a little bit rougher and some of the detail isn't as perfect. The underframe certainly isn't as perfect. The lettering isn't quite as crisp, but you know what? Again, for fifteen bucks, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. Now, what I'm gonna do to it? What I wanted to do, I'm gonna put on a set of the. Well, I call it Molo. Is it Moloco or Moloco? I'm gonna call it Moloco. If I'm wrong, correct me. If it pisses you off, stop watching the video. These are Moloco draft gear right here. They're the DG0408 FMC, the cushion draft gear. And I bought these from Moloko just to have them. I have, a, I think, two or three others to try this exact thing. So I'm going to try it on this car. Now, you can see this car comes with the underbody. Again, it doesn't even have the cushioning device, which the Tangent does. Oh, sorry about that. I hit the phone. If I understand it, you know, the cushioning device would probably be here, and you can have... You know, a hydro cushion, I think, cushion device, a keystone cushioning device, which is, which could be different than the draft gear. So I don't claim to be any type of expert on these at all. I just know I wanted to put a different draft gear than these little extensions they have on the Robbins Rails kit. Okay. And I'm glad I did because I noticed one end, it's already broken off. I guess that's what you get when you buy crap off eBay. All right. So I'm going to cut that end off. Cut that end off. Cut these off back to fit this draft gear. That's what it looks like on the left there when it's assembled. Right there. And on the right, that's an unassembled one. Designed to fit a KD whisker, whisker coupler. I put in the regular size. Is it a 147 or 148? I don't know, something like that. You could, of course, or you could put a scale size if that turns you on. I did have to trim or file the edge of the KD coupler a little tiny bit because otherwise it would kind of bump inside here and it wouldn't it wouldn't move back and forth you know perfectly so a couple of real swipes with a with a file fix that up for trucks I am going to put on these tangent trucks that I got that I guess are right they're 100 ton trucks and they look a lot like the ones that are on the tangent car, so they're probably pretty darn close. So that's them. I got them weathered up, cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. These are their TSM 400, the 100 ton Barber S2 roller bearing truck with rotating Timken cap. Okay, I don't need rotating caps. It's kind of, to me, it's a gimmick, but hey, you know what? Okay, fine. I just find with all these rotating ones, I keep losing them. And they go pinging around, and I never find them again. I never have enough. And uh, Anyway, that, that's my own personal problem. So those are going to be the trucks that are going to go on it. Uh, they do fit. However, you see I had to put... There's actually two of the KD... What's their red washer? 015? Because when you put this on the underframe, on the bolster, they can get it while holding... And, and, of course, when it was sitting on the underframe, it would hit the ribs. I don't know if I get the light on that. Eh, a little bit better. 
it would hit these ribs. Maybe because they're 100 ton trucks, I don't know. The wheels were definitely rubbing across here. So I had to pop it up, I guess it's 030, to keep it up above that so they're not hitting. Do they still look okay? Yeah, I, th I think they look okay. Now, of course, you could come in here and file some of this off. Because let's be honest, you're not going to see the underframe a whole lot when it's on the on the layout. And I think once I get this done, if I successfully get the draft gear on it and get that, you know, weathered up a little bit, it's gonna it's not going to look as good as a tangent car. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. And if Tangent ever comes out with their car, their Greenville car, in nickel plate, oh, I'm buying them. But for now, they don't. That's their first run. I have one of the Wabash cars, I think an Erie Lackawanna car. And again, they are absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to take this, and once I think I get it you know, done, finished up, new trucks, get the draft gear on it get it weathered a little bit. It's going to look pretty darn good, especially running around the layout. Not quite as nice as a tangent, like I said, but okay, fine. It's good enough for me to run around. All right, so let's see what happens. I got to cut off. That one's already gone. <laughs> like I said, I bought it that way. This end's got to come off, and then I got to measure and just kind of cut a little bit so I can take this, fit it in here, and it comes with the screws to get it onto the floor so it lines up, you know, the same distance out as they currently are. And I think it's going to look, you know, it's going to look better for sure. At least the draft gear should look a lot better. Now, I don't think it's exactly the same. I don't know if I can show it as the draft gear on the Wabash car. You see how it kind of flares out there a little bit? And that's on the, the tangent car. Now, I don't know. Maybe they're different. You know, who says the Wabash car didn't get different draft gear than the nickel plate car? I don't really know know that level of detail but anyway that's what i'm going to try so uh, let's see what happens and how this bad boy goes together okay real quick let me just uh take a look at this this is the morning sun wabash nickel plate dt and i color book good book for freight equipment i like it and here is on this pair here there is the nickel plate car and it's made by Greenville. And let me just pull this in so we can take a look. You know, that that is the car. And it's, it's I got to tell you, you know, Robin's Rails car is, is pretty darn close. Uh, like I said, the lettering's a little bit, as I look at it, it's a little bit. Well, I think most of the differences are, this is a 1976 picture. So I'm not going anywhere near that late. So I think that's why it's got some... Uh, you know, different stuff on it. It's obviously got the, is that the ACI label or whatever is on it there. And this, oh, I can't see what I'm doing. This is, I think, more as delivered. But you know what? It's pretty darn, if you look at the lettering, I mean, man, maybe a, a few slight differences, but not bad. Again, you get this car weathered up a little bit, you're not really going to be able to tell. I'm telling you, you're not. So that's the nickel plate car. And then just for shits and giggles, there is the tangent Wabash car right here. That that is it. I mean that that is the exact car, and of course it looks pretty darn nice. Yeah, the tangent does a nice job on all their stuff. Just just to show that that is it. You can definitely see how the draft gear, you know, tends to stick out a little bit, and it looks like if I go back to the nickel plate car. Uh, where's that bad boy as I bore the death out of you on you? Right, come on. Come on, Rob. Uh, nope. Knuckle plate. Nah, nickel plate cabins. Not it. There it is. Okay. It, it does look like this draft gear kind of flares out. You know, sort of like that draft gear does. But that would be cool if uh, Tangent sold that. But I don't know if I can find... Oop. Get down here, you moron. That exact thing from um, a loco. I'm not, I'm not sure, but you know what? I don't care. The, the one I have is fine. So what I did, gonna go do do do. Zoom over here real quick. On the other side of the bench, there's the underframe. Now, obviously, this underframe from Robin's Rails does not have the actual cushioning device where the tangent car does. So, but you could buy it if you really, really wanted to put it in there. You probably could get it and put it in there, but. 
you know what? I'm not worried about it. You're never, not never, but except for a photograph or something like that or a bad derailment, you're never going to see the underside, you know, that. Or I don't think you're going to see it on my layout because my layout, you look down. If you're on an eye level layout, eh, maybe. So what I did, I took this underframe and I cut that off, okay? That's the, that's the original. That's the one end. And then here's the other end. And again, this has been cut off, and that's the Molico piece. Boom. And it's got two screw holes to hold it, I think, and one for the coupler pocket so you can change the coupler. And then what I'll do, it's not a perfect match, and, and that's okay. I'm not really worried about that. But that's going to sit on there like that. Oh boy, it's dark. And it'll sit on there like that. So what I'll probably do is probably get this you know, glued. I think I don't think you're supposed to, but I'm going to probably glue this on and then bring this in and try to get it, you know, screwed on. I'm thinking the couplers are going to be right, but if not, you know, they have the uh, underset and overset couplers if you really, really need it. Uh, here's the piece cut off. Oh, no, that's the, uh, this is hard to do when you hold a camera, look through it and try to, all right, anyway. <laughs> See, dork. All right. So that's the piece cut off, and all that, all the you know the piece that covered the cover pog that was just on the underframe. Well, I cut that off, obviously both ends, and we're going to use this. The whole oops, it's hard to see when your big fat fingers are in the way. We're going to use that. So again, that's going to go there. Get it all back together. See how she looks, and away we go. Okay, back on the Robbins Rails car. I put the draft gears on the ends out of the Moloko kit. So they are on there. I did screw them in. The one screw in the back actually holds on the draft gear just by itself. The ones in the front, the very first one just holds the pocket on. The second one is through both the pocket and I'll call it the holder. So that's, you know, through to the car. Let me just show you here. You can see on the back side. That's what it looks like from the side with the Katie coupler in it. And there's, I don't know if I have them exactly right. They're off a little bit, I see. <laughs> oh, well. That's that. And then I did... Add some weight that I had laying around. I got a bunch of old Athern and other flat weights. So the things weighed to right about five ounces, which is just about what it should be for a 60-foot car, if I calculated it correctly. So like I said, that is the... Let me see if I get some light down there. That's the draft gear at the other end. With the Katie Whisper. Whisper. Shh. They're Katie whis Whisker couplers. <laughs> I whispered that. Sorry. So that is ready to go. I did. I took it outside and I sprayed it just quickly. And again, you're not going to see much. It's got some Panzer Gray on it and then some German Field Gray from the Vallejo Hobby Spray line. That's on there. Again, you're not going to see a lot, at least on my layout. Now, I know there should be probably, I think, a hydro cushion cushioning device right here in the center of it. Which if you you could buy that stuff, if, you know, from a local, I think they sell it. So if you want to go do go, go crazy, you probably could super detail the underbody, but I am not gonna kind of verily about it. So that's the underbody. Pretty much ready to rock and roll. So next over here, do 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 do. And there's the body. Gotta get that on. Trucks are ready to go. And then I gotta put of course the ladders and the roof walk. And all that kind of fun stuff has to go on that car. And it gets weathered up a little bit. Put it together and hopefully she runs nicely on the layout. So, okay. More to come as we progress along here. All right. This car is done. Enough of the layout. So here's the underside. It, it really is just the Robbins Rails underbody uh, with the new Maloco draft gear added there at the end. You can see how I just I kind of cut back where it needed to be cut back. And then I uh, 
screw, actually glued it and screwed it on there. It's on the, the very front screws for the coupler cover itself, just the coupler. And the back two actually go through and hold on to the car. I did retruck it. I don't know if you can see that. Those are some of the, um, they're tangent. I think I showed those earlier. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the tangent uh, trucks. They're nice. And they're the 100-ton uh, trucks. So I believe that's what this car had. So that was done because the Robins Rails trucks look terrible. Now, I probably could, here in the center, I could have added right in between here, right here, pardon the fat finger, is where I could have put the Hydro Cushion draft gear. You can buy that, but you know what? I, I didn't do it because you're not likely going to see this underside. I mean, after I did get the Moloco draft gear on, I, I did give it a spray of the uh, Vallejo um, German field gray just to kind of weather it down a little bit. Yes, I know there's a lot of other brake rigging and brake lines and air hoses on the draft gear you can add. I, I totally get that. I am not claiming that this is going to be a rpm quality car it's just a car i wanted to make put it together do what i could within limits and then get it on the layout so let me uh let me pop it up and we throw it on my little test track and we'll see how the couplers line up all right there's the car on the test track again it's been weathered up a little bit the ladders are the original they're just out of the kit um, i think i did have to no i didn't never mind i didn't i didn't have to cut them down because they came short on the one end so they're okay they're are they too heavy? Yes. Are they to scale? Eh, probably not. But you know what? Again, like I said, this is just something that I wanted to throw together and do what I could. The roof walk is out of the kit. I had to do a little bit of finagling to get that to fit in. It was a little bit tougher than I thought. I had to go down and sand across underneath it so it would adhere to the top, to the roof, the top, though, the roof of the boxcar. The only thing I really did at the end, again, I used all the kit. Brake rigging and stuff is a perfect no. But I did replace the brake wheel. I didn't like the one that was in the kit. It looked really too... Can I get in there? I don't know what's going on. So that is actually a Katie. I think it's a minor brake wheel. It just looked like what the original car had. So that was just carefully put in there. A little dab of super glue holding that in that's it so it looks like everything lines up fairly good on this end yeah maybe it, perfect yeah maybe not perfect but now how it's going to track since the draft gear don't move they're straight out we'll see but i have fairly large curve so we'll see what happens and then this side yeah seems to look pretty good all right so that's that car Again, with the, I mean, it, really in a nutshell, all I really did was add the Moloko draft gear, retruck it, and then everything else is just in the kit. And then I just kind of weathered it up, and we're going to throw it in the layout and see how she runs. Um, you can see that I, I did have to add the, <laughs> that was kind of an adventure, the, the stirrup steps. They were in the kit. They came with it. I think they're detail associates or something like that. They're the those plastic type things but i had to drill the holes for it i drilled 78 holes of course i screwed up one of them one of them was broken one of the pins on on the stirrups was broken and the other one i kind of drilled on the outside by mistake that's a problem trying to model with one eye so i just kind of super glued them on there those are uh, very carefully super glued onto that i don't think they're going to show up if I go in close, if it's going to flip over to them, probably not. No, nah, sorry. But they, uh, they're they on. So, again, that's not the detail people are going to super, super, super notice. But I wanted to put them on since I had them. So that is the car. And now it's uh, ready to go on the layout. All right, just to show this quick as another little bonus to the uh, other video. This is a... Walther's Proto Car. We got yeah, and it is the where can I find it here? Right there, that's it. Sixty foot Pullman Standard single door box, New York Central. 
I had to renumber it because I had I didn't realize I had another one of these on the layout already. So I didn't do a great, great job, but it, it has been it has been <laughs> it has been uh renumbered. I made it it was an 08, now it's a, a 15. Same series on the New York Central. So this is another car that if you look, I did replace the what Walthers calls their draft gear. Because you can see the other screw pockets out there. It had one of the silly couplers on it. It came out. It would swing in between here and here is where they had a, a cover over it. So I just took all that off, added this, you know, onto the underframe, you know, to line up. And it, it seems to line up. I did retruck it as well. Uh, that's got uh, tangent 70-ton trucks on it. This has got a little bit better underbody detail slightly. But again, I'm not real worried about that because I'm not planning to, to do a whole lot of having a thing lay on its side. It's not quite the Penn Central era. <laughs> Sorry, Penn Central guys. But that is it. So that's another car that I did, the exact same thing. Got it weathered up and, oh, what the heck. We'll throw it on the test track and see how it looks. All right, going back in time real quick just to show. This is the other Walther's Proto New York Central car that I have. And there's the original draft gear. So you can see what you get. I mean, it works okay. I don't have an issue with it not working. But, you know, to me, it doesn't look all that. It's not as attached to the car. It's got that weird spring here, you know, back here where the... No, it does move. That's probably so it can go on smaller radius curves, I'm going to guess. But you can see that the draft gear, you know, doesn't really look like draft gear compared to the, you know, a, a product like the Maloco product. I took the truck off so you can see it. And that's the other end, what it looks like. I mean, it's not it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. Here, and this is the car itself. I put it on a piece of a stepper boom because it's got no truck on it. That's the other car. That's the original, the 56508. I said, I mean, I mean, mine a 515. I kind of messed up when I renumbered it, but uh, no one's going to notice it probably. So that's the other car, and that is the original walther's draft gear that you get with it so i just thought i'd show that really really quick just to complement the other segment when i replace that all right there it is like i said it's weathered up slightly it's not crazy there's definitely some dirt and, and whatnot on it and i did do a little bit on the on the roof now this car does not have a walkway which is pretty typical and it looks like with the new draft gear and the new trucks and everything, it seems to line up okay with the... Get in there. It's, <laughs> these are painted, so that might be a little bit of a problem. But there we go. Seems to line up fairly... Oh, can I back in the light here? Dude. Seems to line up pretty good. And I'm happy with it. All right. So there you go. So there is the other car with the new draft gear on it. Hang on, we'll see how it runs. I took out the uh, the old Walther stuff and put on the new. And let's just do a quick double check. Let me just pop this off here. Pardon me. Of course, you can't see crap. So my fingers, because I can't hold the phone and do all this at once. It's like trying to chew gum and walk. So there's the other end. Eh, might be a little bit high on that end. But unless the gauge is off a little bit. But... Yeah, maybe a hair, but I'm not going to... I mean, you could always go in and throw a different coupler in there or something like that, but the draft gear is going to sit where it sits because of the body of the car. So there we go. So that's it. I'm going to call this one done as well and get these two cars over on the layout.